morning, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Jason Martin. I'm the technical specification um, manager at Manuk, and I'm here today to talk about the benefits of our Manuk Aircrete uh, thermal block. Um, I suppose any self builder now, one of the fourth decisions are early for that they have to make is what form of construction am I going to build my house in? You know, and particularly the walls. There's there's, there's, there's a range of different I suppose options out there. So. I have to decide early on what am I going to build my walls with and it's a very important uh, decision because as you can see there from the way diagram um, most heat you lose through your thermal elements is lost through the walls. Up to 35% of the heat loss from your home is lost out through your walls so it's very very important that uh, you get that decision right at an early stage. And that's where the Monarch Air Creek block comes in. Now, if you're not familiar with the block, um, it's an autoclaved aerial concrete block, and it's, it's got a unique microcellular structure, and it's filled with millions of tiny air pockets, sort of like an aero bar. And those uh, air pockets give the block its uh, insulation properties. It's very light, yet it's still that doesn't compromise the compressive strength. So while it's very light, it's still very strong. In fact, it's the same strength as a typical dense concrete block and we've got some samples over that are down there if you want to touch and feel the block to see what it's like. Uh, some of the uh, benefits obviously from a thermal point of view it's exceptional um, it insulates up to 10 times better than that of a, of a traditional dense block and um, that helps achieve ends and passive house standards fairly easily. It's made from up to 80% recycled material which makes it a very sustainable building material and it's the best performing block in Ireland for combined thermal structure and fire performance. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, later on. There's a range of plot products um, in terms of strength and thermal performance. So we have uh, the 7.5 Newton block, uh, which is typically what your uh, concrete, your dense concrete block would be, and has a conductivity of 0.9 watts per meter Kelvin. Compare that to a dense block of 1.33. The lower the thermal conductivity, the better. So there's a huge improvement in thermal performance in that block over a traditional dense block. This block here is a 2.9 Newton block and it is a conductivity of 0.12 and that insulates up to 10 times better than a dense concrete block. So uh, really it's out in the zone in terms of thermal performance. One of the main benefits or uses for uh, the aircrete thermal block is for thermal bridging. You may or may not have heard tell of thermal bridging, but it's an area or a component of an object that has a poor thermal conductivity in the surrounding materials. We're going to look at a few examples in the next slides, but it creates a path of least resistance for heat transfer. So basically, a thermal bridge is where you lose more heat through that location than the surrounding locations, and it typically occurs in the uh, junctions in a building fabric um, and that again can account to a significant amount of heat loss. In fact it can account to up to 35% of heat loss for buildings and the more insulation you put in your walls and floors and roofs and the better the U-value of your wall, floor and roof the more critical thermal bridging become because that's a that's a easier path for the heat to get out then when you've better insulated uh, elements. Just looking at a few examples then, if we look at this diagram here, this is a typical floor to wall junction. So uh, we have all this insulation in our floor and we have a cavity wall insulation. We're spending a lot of money on this insulation to insulate these elements well, excuse me, but we've left a gap. This is a, a clear path for heat to go down through this dense uh, concrete block where our insulation envelope is broken and this is what we call a thermal bridge. Uh, very easy to uh, sort that problem out. Just simply substitute two dense concrete blocks with two monarch aircrete blocks and believe it or not that simple change reduces the heat loss through that junction by over 10 times. So this junction here is, more, is 10 times more thermally efficient than this junction here and there's no issue with structural performance or anything else. Other typical junctions then 
if we look then at our attic, so uh, we have a heated bedroom below, we have a cold attic space up above, we have a loft roll in here, we put in uh, maybe 400 mil of loft roll, we have a cavity wall insulation, but again, the insulation doesn't meet. It's broken by our dense concrete block inner leaf. So again, simply switching two dense blocks with two air creek blocks, you prevent that cold bridge at that junction. Again, this is a, we're looking here at a roof abutment detail. So we can imagine this is a sunroom. This is a rafters and our tiles. So we can imagine that sloping off into the screen there. We have in, our insulation in our uh, roof between our rafters and below our rafters. This is our outer leaf. So this outside temperature, that could be maybe minus five degrees. In here, we have a temperature of 20 degrees. Uh, so you have a huge amount of heat bypassing your roof insulation there through uh, conduction in your blocks and convection here in your cavity and uh, poor, poor junction. And that's typical of what uh, a lot of uh, houses in Ireland are being built, built like today. Uh, again, very simple fix. Two Manock air creek blocks um, and at that location and uh, you, you, you overcome that problem. I suppose heat loss is one issue with thermal bridging. The other issue is mold growth. When you have a thermal bridge at a junction, uh, because you have so much heat loss at that junction, the surface temperature on the inside of your wall is quite low. And condensation and mold growth occurs where you have um, vapour carrying air droplets where they touch and condense on a cold surface, combined with poor ventilation. So if you have a junction here whereby you have a thermal bridge down through your floor to wall junction, your sofa temperature is low, you can get this uh, problem that we're looking at here over on the right hand side. Introducing two manic air creek blocks, like what we looked at in the previous slide, increases the surface temperature from 15.282 degrees up to 18.47 degrees. So then we have uh, warmer surface temperature and no thermal bridge at that junction. And that's important from, it's, it's very, obviously very unsightly, it's, uh, as well as that it's, it's very unhealthy to, for mold growth like that. So uh, if nothing else, uh, only for the comfort and the health of our home, it's important to address thermal bridges. What does this look like inside? So uh, this uh, house builder here has seen the issues of thermal bridging and he's introduced air creek blocks in locations where he has thermal bridging. Here's the floor to wall junction. This is some of the roof abutment details here. This is probably a sunroom detail. And the thermal bridge over on the right hand, or the thermal image over on the right hand side, you can clearly see where the thermal blocks are in the wall and, and the corpus that they serve. And you can, you can actually pick out the uh, mortar joints in the blocks where you're getting more heat through the mortar than you are through the dense block. Probably in any typical house, you're looking at six to seven junctions where you have heat loss through thermal bridging. In this particular house here, everywhere where we're showing a purple lane, if you want to be serious about addressing your thermal bridging, you should be in introducing a thermal block at all those locations where uh, there's a purple lane. Um, we have a set of accredited construction details available on our website which shows uh, how to address those thermal bridging, bridges at, the, at those junctions. But what we're finding is people who are serious about thermal bridging and they want to deal with all the junctions, they're saying, uh, well, I've blocks here, I've blocks here, I've blocks here. Uh, the block layer's not particularly happy because he has to mix in blocks, match blocks. The plaster's not particularly happy. So what they're deciding to do is if they build the entire inner leaf of the cavity wall with a manic air creek block, they're addressing all the thermal bridges by default. They're improving the U-value of the wall. Um, they're redu reducing the uh, heat loss through the thermal bridges by up to 80%. As I say, the U-value is improved. Um, if you want, you can pull back on insulation or uh, renewable technologies because you have the benefit of less heat loss through thermal bridging. And when you do your SAP or be your calcs, that will be clear to be seen. Um, no mixing and matching of blocks, so you don't have that issue with the block layer whereby he's mixing and matching blocks 
um, no differential movement between the two different types of blocks. Um, faster response time when compared to dense block. If you come into your house uh, in the evening and it's cold and you switch on your heating, uh, a dense block will take longer, the room will take longer to heat up because the block is absorbing a certain amount of heat uh, so the room obviously cools up a bit slower. The aircrate block being a thermal product doesn't absorb uh, as much heat so the room will heat, heat up quicker and it will maintain the heat uh, more. Also they have noted optimal thermal mass. Thermal mass is very important in, in, in homes, particularly where you have a lot of south facing glazing and that's the way houses are being designed today by uh, good architects. What thermal mass is, I suppose, um, we can see over in the diagram here, during the day uh, the energy from the sun is absorbed through uh, south facing glazing and that comes in and heats up the room but the heat then is absorbed by the thermal mass in your room. It's absorbed by your concrete floors and your concrete walls and what that does is it prevents your uh, room from heating up too much. So it more like, and, and then at night when your, when your room starts to cool down the heat that's stored in your concrete floors and your walls it starts to dissipate back into your room and keeps your room warmer for longer in the evening. And what that does, it helps uh, regulate the temperature. So we don't have, your room doesn't get as hot or it doesn't get as cold. It regulates the temperature curve, which is, uh, which is very important. And as I say, we would uh, say that, uh, that uh, air crate blocks have an optimal thermal mass um, over and above dense concrete blocks, which sometimes have that uh, disadvantage of uh, taking, storing too much energy when you're trying to heat up your, your room from a cold temperature. Um, so that's we've discussed the uh, air crate inner leaf. If you want to take it one step further, um, we have been promoting a solution called uh, Sims by Manuk. It's a single leaf uh, block construction with an external insulation system on the, on the outside of it. And you can see an example of both the air crate inner leaf and the Sims solution on our stand uh, at the show here. So what uh, Sims by Manuk is, it's a unique offering which offers builders in Ireland the opportunity to build a superior performance home in the most cost effective way. Uh, this is the way they build uh, block work houses in, on mainland Europe, Germany, Poland, Austria. There's no cavities in those countries. It's a single leaf um, air creek block with external insulation system. And it's uh, combining our Manuk air creek blocks with a certified external insulation system. I think there's something like 16 certified uh, external insulation systems in Ireland, so there's a wide uh, choice of uh, products there to use. Just looking at it in more detail, um, 215, so it's a nine inch Manuk airproof block. That block is nine inches wide by nine inches high, so it's the same size as two four inch blocks on the flat. Um, so it, uh, it is quite quick to build. Um, on the inside it can be finished with plasterboard or wet plaster. On the outside you have your EPS insulation and then it's finished by uh, several coats of render. So you have a base coat, into the base coat then you bed a reinforcing mesh, mesh which gives it a strength and then you have a finished coat on the outside and that can be a silicone coat, uh, acrylic coat, there's various uh, dash coats that you can put on it as well. Straightforward um, method of construction. There's no issue with DPCs or anything. The block layers, you're not relying on your block layer to fit your insulation, DPCs, none of that. Your block layers just be, uh, lay in blocks and then a specialist comes in and does the external insulation system. The benefits there, um, we'll run through them briefly here. Some of them's covered uh, in more detail in uh, a few slides' time. Uh, excellent thermal performance, superior fire performance, uh, enhanced air tightness. It's a cost effective solution very, very quick and it's zero condensation risk. So moving on then to look at some of those in more detail. Thermal performance. Um, the structure of your, the, the, the product you're using to build the structure of your house is a thermal product. It's, it's 10 times the same more thermally efficient than a traditional dense block. So that in itself is giving you a great thermal performance. External insulation is extremely thermally efficient. By wrapping, the outside of your home with insulation, 
and eliminating thermal bridging, that's the best way to uh, insulate your homes. There's no risk of thermal looping, which can be a danger if insulation is, is fitted incorrectly in a cavity. You're cutting that issue out. There's no reliance on block layers to fit insulation. Block layers get paid um, typically for laying blocks. Uh, and they're not keen on fitting insulation. Some of them do it well, others don't do it so well. So you're taking that responsibility off your block layer. He's there to build blocks, uh, what he's good at, and um, another uh, specialist is coming then to fit the insulation. There's no restrictness, restriction on the insulation thickness. I suppose if we're looking at cavity walls now, we're talking about 150 mil cavity is typical. Um, if we're looking at a partial fill insulation, we can put 100 to 110 mil insulation in that. Full fill insulation, we're going to be in 150. With insulation on the outside of a single leaf block wall, there's no restriction on the thickness of insulation um, that you, you put in there. And if you can see there, um, 140 mil of EPS insulation on the outside of a manic block achieves a U value of 0.18, which is quite good. 170 mil will bring you down to 0.15, which is sort of passive house level. And if you want to go further, 200 mil on the outside of our 215 monarch block gets you down to 0.13. So your wall is still at sort of that 400, 420 mil in thickness, and you have a super low U value there. And then, as I said before, thermal bridging is addressed by uh, almost by default. So you're reducing the thermal bridging at that junction, by, at, at those junctions, by um, up to 80%. Some people get the impression because the block is quite light that it, it's not strong, that it's not as strong as a dense block. We commissioned a study. Um, by a consultant engineer to compare the strength of our single leaf aircrete block built with thin joint mortar uh, against the traditional cavity wall construction. And you can see there um, a 215 aircrete 7 is uh, up to 300% stronger. So it's three times stronger than traditional uh, cavity wall construction. So from a strength point of view, there's no issue at all. In fact, if you wanted to reduce your wall thickness, you could probably get away with a 150 air creep block, um, and that reduces the overall thickness of your wall, and you're still stronger here than a traditional cavity wall construction. So from a strength point of view, uh, no issue. Fire performance, um, the 215 air creep block gives you four hours structural fire performance. If we compare that to timber frame, which typically gets half hour, it is much more uh, superior than, than, than what a timber frame construction is going to get to. The additional gravity wall gets you two hours, which is, is more than enough, but the, the, the single leaf 215 is uh, better than that. And it's a non combustible material, which is very important. Moving on to speed of build, if we look at the additional cavity here, uh, we've got in this particular, if you're to, to, to raise your block hooks there by that height, your block hook, you have six blocks to build and you've insulation to install in your cavity. So that's going to take some time. If you use our Sims uh, solution, your block layer is only building three blocks and he's not, so that's going to be twice as quick already. Then he doesn't have to fit the insulation, so it could be up to 60% quicker to build uh, the SIM solution over and above the traditional cavity wall solution, and it's, it's typically uh, more thermally efficient, so it is, it is up to 60% uh, faster. So from a speed of build point of view, very good. From a cost point of view, um, as when you take your labour into account and the savings you make in time and labour, um, it is co cost comparable with traditional uh, cavity wall construction. And we've done a study to show that it's up to 10 times uh, less expensive than timber frame. And uh, as well as that, if you use, uh, if you build your uh, home with either Aircrate Innerleaf or the SIM solution, we're offering discounts on product bundles where we, whereby you can buy the Aircrate blocks, um, precast concrete floor and roof tiles as part of a bundle and you will get a 10% discount off that. So some of the guys on the stand can speak to you about that today if it's of interest. So sort of sum up Sims um, in comparison to timber frame with additional cavity. Speed of construction, we've talked about it. Sims is very quick. Timber frame is quick also. Traditional cavity tends to be quite slow. Thermal performance, uh, Sims gets excellent thermal performance. 
uh, timber frame is good. Traditional cavity, to be honest, is only fair if the insulation is not fitted correctly. If the insulation, insulation is fitted well and you deal with your thermal bridging, then it is quite good, but the SIM solution has an excellent thermal performance as well. Structural performance, we've discussed that. It stands out in its own in terms of structural performance. Fire performance, um, four hours versus 30 minutes. And cost, we would say that it's best value of all the solutions there. A couple of case studies um, that was fe featured recently. Um, this little house in uh, Sandy Cove in Dublin was featured in Passive House Plus a few months ago. Um, it's actually the first house in Ireland to be built to the ha Passive House Plus standard. So with quite a few Passive Houses in Ireland, but this is this is the first this was the first one built to the Passive House Plus standard, and it was built using single leaf monic aircraft blocks with an external insulation system. So they used the same solution on that particular house, and uh, the estimated energy bill in that house, including the charge an electric vehicle, is less than three, 400 euros per year. This is another um, passive house that was built in uh, down in Cork City a few years ago, and it was the first house in Ireland to achieve gold uh, standard home performance index. And again, it was built using SIMS with a single air creep, single leaf air creep block with external insulation. So it's telling that these forces for a home performance index and passive house plus standards that the designers of these houses chose to go with single leaf air creep and external insulation. Uh, quickly, just uh, we're almost finished now. Sustainability obviously is becoming more and more important, and um, and aircraft thermal blocks, as I said before, they're made up to eight, from up to eighty percent recycled material, which is very important. That gives them a low. Uh, carbon footprint and as well as that they're gonna because they're improving the U value of your house and reducing thermal bridge and the overall um, carbon coming from your home over the lifetime of it is going to be significantly reduced. Um, all our products including our monarch aircraft blocks has a uh, a third party verified uh, environmental performance declaration so the the uh, sustainability credentials of our products are, 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 can be seen there on, uh, in our uh, third party EPDs. Um, Aircrete by its nature has an A plus screen guide rating which is uh, Gives it a, a, makes it a sustainable product. And um, most of the products going into our aircraft blocks are, are locally sourced, with the exception of um, aluminium and lime. All the rest of the ingredients that go into those uh, blocks are sourced locally to ourselves, which reduces the carbon footprint for our transport. And because of the weight of the blocks as well, the transport of the blocks to site. Um, you can put twice as many blocks in a load, so again, that's reducing the carbon footprint of the transport. Just looking, I suppose, at Manock as a whole, um, we have tailor-made packages um, available. You can discuss them with the guys in the stand today. Um, the, some of the other products in our range, we do uh, PIR wall insulation, PIR uh, roof insulation and we do PIR and expanded polystyrene floor insulation. We also manufacture precast concrete floors and stairs and uh, we manufacture concrete roof tiles. Um, we've got an excellent technical team who uh, are on hand to discuss um, your project from early stages, you know, to advise in terms of thermal bridging, new values, etc. Um, I've mentioned the product bundles and the discounts available for buying a combination of products. Um, we've got on-site support services as well, so if you decide to go with the Sims uh, solution and your block layer is not familiar with it, we can send an engineer out to, to site to help you get started and talk you to the, through the process. Um, the guys in the office there can do um, estimates of your plans for uh, volumes and, and new value calculations, etc. So there's a range of uh, incentives there for those to come and talk to us about your about your self build. So um, that's really our contact details there. There's a self build uh, brochure available on our stand with those contact details in it, and uh, that's really the end of the presentation, folks. And thanks for your time, but if you have any questions now, um, I'd be happy to answer them here, or if you're more comfortable, come over and talk to us at the stand. I'll be knocking around there for a while, and I can help you out there.